Hey, travelers. Another week, another vlog. Ah. And I switched out Jake for Troy. Yeah. I'm back. Hey. Yeah. 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 Nice to have you back. Feels good to be back. Yeah. I, I have like a little dent in this chair that I like. Well, that's your side, man. Yeah. It's yeah. my side. Yeah. I don't, I don't really, I haven't worked. I, I kind of move, move around You're a little, a little bit lighter than me. Head. You're a little lighter. Yeah. You don't wear out things quite as fast. Yeah. 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 That might be. Uh, so this week, uh, not only is this week, well, today, <clears> so <throat> you're probably not going to watch it on this day, but the the following day, it's uh, the 85th anniversary of being done with Prohibition. Oh, wow. In case you didn't know that. That feels good. Right? What president signed that into law? Was it Woodrow Wilson? Boy, I don't know. Alex, look at that's, that. That's right up That's right up your alley, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to say it's Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. Wham that glad, guy. Glad Wham he's him dead. on the nose. <laughs> Let's not resurrect that guy. <laughs> if, if we can ever do the Futurama thing and put heads in a, you know buckets, we're not doing Woodrow Wilson. I can tell I, you. I can't read. Good it. call. That's yeah. Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. yeah I like nice. my presidential history, man. Way to way to be. That's you know I, when it comes to politics, I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care either. I just yeah. like presidential history. I like yeah, politics hey. from 150 years ago. Nice. That's where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Good so. old old timey politics. Yes, Alex. Oh, Wilson vetoed it. Oh, oh so it was all the congressmen and the well, it was it was congressmen then. I didn't have to be politically correct about that because there's no congresswomen. Yeah, back I don't think there was any women in nope 1920. So at that point, you know what? Woodrow Wilson was not such a bad guy after. Maybe all. not. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we can put him in a bucket with water. Yeah, huh? yeah. Sorry, Woodrow. I mean, we want to get him pre-stroke though. Yeah. You don't want post-stroke Wilson. No, that's that's no. not. I guess that I didn't. <laughs> the post stroke Wilson. 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 That was a good band name. Dibs. Yeah. So we're gonna start with. Uh, you know, well, first of all, we're, let's let's talk a little bit about hot passport. Oh, explain uh, to me about this hot passport. Hot passport. Have. So I got one this last what year from it? from those from those nice people at Ale Adventures in Minnesota. Oh. They're uh, they're a couple. They, oh yeah. And they uh, they go they, uh, go on, hopping hopping they, around to different breweries. They go and on try beer. Ale Adventures. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Ale is a type of beer landed. I wish I would have done that when I was younger, before kids, you know? Yeah. Uh, I still do it now a little bit. I'd anyway, you do a good job with kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, hard well, to get out of the house. And... They've been to a lot of breweries. Yeah, well, that's good for them. Uh, anyway, so... Or we'll find out. If you go to hotpassport.com and you want to buy one of these little guys, uh, who doesn't like two-for-one beers, right? So that's the deal? That's the deal. So, you know, you, you turn to a page, say... Uh, Say, I'm going to go over to Birch's on the Lake in Long, heard, Long Lake, I've, Minnesota. I've literally heard they have some amazing food there. Right. Yeah. And they've got some really good beer, too. Oh. And and the scenery. And the scenery. And the scenery. Uh, and it's a supper club. So did you go to Bent? I did. Oh. Yeah. So you can go over to Birch's on the Lake. You walk in and you go, hey, I got this hot passport. And they go, oh. And you get a two for one. So you get two beers for the price of one. They stamp it, and then you move on. How much does the hot passport cost? This guy is, uh, I believe it's $25. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. So if you drink five beers, because on average, the, a beer costs about $5, give yeah. or take the place and the style. Yep. So let's say an average of $5, you get five beers, and it pays for itself. Right. So And there's way more than five breweries in this. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's a big booklet. It's, yeah. a, it's a good It's a good size book. And... Since uh, since we were told that we could give a promo code to our friends, and Ooh. all of you that watch the vlog, I consider you friends. Suckers. So, <laughs> so if you type in, when you go to checkout, so no matter if you get the Minnesota one, the Wisconsin one, there's a California, Oregon, uh, they got all kinds of states. Hmm. Um, if you type in promo code Taproom Travelers, and it'll be uh, on the- Why on, Taproom Travelers? Well- I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. Name so, the show. Yeah. <laughs> so if you type in Taproom Travelers, you get $5 off. So on a $25 book, that's 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. That's... So it's, you. yeah, you get that's... four, you're down to four beers before you make your money back. Yeah. What a deal. This ain't bad. And what it's good deal. for just one year? Good for the whole year. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Now is the time then to get 2019. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. That's a good pre Chris. pre order, and and these books for 2019 look like a hot, an actual passport, so they're good, blue. Good Christmas gift, right? Yeah, stocking stuffer. You can always buy me one too if you want. I'm. It'd be a little creepy for you to come to my house and put it in my stocking, but you can send it in the mail. I don't know if they whatever. want to go in my sock drawer. Oh, 
put it in the sock drawer? Well, you said put it in my stocking. That's where I keep my stockings. Oh. Oh, put, Christmas. You don't do stockings. the don't do the whole Christmas. You don't thing? have a fireplace no? to put them on. Well, who needs a fireplace? <laughs> okay. Thought that was the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Alex yeah. is really talking you, to you. Put, I know we should give him a microphone. Uh anyway, let's let's break let's break into the beers. We probably can give you a microphone. We can just Oh jeez. So needs, we're, we want to start with Crooked U or Pen? Uh well what's the what's the Crooked U? That's is a it a Scottish, Scottish Scottish ale? Should we go from lighter light ish to dark? Well we have a Scottish and box, box. so they're all more or less in the same same place. You playground. know what? You brought the beer. I'll let you pick. Oh, let's go with Pen Brewing. All right. Yeah, I'm excited about Pen. I've been aging these beers for years. Okay. So we need a bottle nice. opener right there. It's right there. So Pen- and so so next tomorrow, which which will be another day past you're watching this, is um, St. Nicholas. Yeah. Yeah. So we have St. Nick Day coming up. So we're drinking Pen Brewing's St. Nick Bach right. Brewers Reserve. Yeah. And uh, Penn Brewing is a brewery in Pennsylvania. It's a German brewery in Pennsylvania. I think it's one of the oldest craft breweries in the in the state, if not the country. It's been around since the 80s, which is pretty pretty legit. It's pretty good for a craft brewery, yeah. Yeah, and you know they're in this historical building. I'm wearing the T-shirt right now. Very That's nice. That's what the building looks Very like. Nice. Yes. Um, so this was one of the closest breweries to my house when I lived in Pittsburgh. So I have fond memories of this place. They made some solid food. Their beers were always good, German styles. Their Oktoberfest was fun. So their uh, their Saint Nick Bach was probably the the Bach that introduced me to the Bach style. I remember very distinctly drinking an insane amount of these one night when I discovered them at a bar. Sure, because I was like, "This is the best thing ever." So they make their regular Saint Nick box, and then they make the brewery reserve, which they add honey to Ooh. up in the ABV a little bit, making yeah. them a bit more ageable, and that's why we've been aging them. And uh, yeah, we shall enjoy this. Hopefully. It's very nice. It's a nice it's copper not, color, not dark so, copper. Not so dark that you can't see through it. You know, if you shine a light through oh, it, yeah. it'll go through. But the, And this is the 2015, mind you. Okay. So there's probably be a little oxidation with it. But I think box in particular are meant to have that little oxidation caramel, is, uh, caramel flavor in them. Ooh, very caramely. But I like it. Yep, once again. That's where you want this. I like it, though. This is the one of few beers that, uh, box in particular, one of few lagers that do well with age. Sure. In fact, that is a part of the flavor profile, that aging. So, I mean, we're right on point with this guy. And I know we talk a lot about aging. Should you do it? Should you not do it? At the end of the day, drink it. Right. Drink it right away. Otherwise, it's really at your discretion. I would say... If you have two bottles of something and, and and the first one that you open, absolutely open it and try it. But if it comes off a little hot, yeah, maybe age the other one for a little while. That's why I'm really glad breweries are going toward the four pack of their specialty beers instead of the bombers, like Founders, for example. And uh, those guys are kind of doing the like the KBSs and four pack. Right. That way you can kind of, you don't you don't like ruin an entire bottle by opening. You drink one, you're like, ah, it's not perfect yet. You can let the other three sit for another year, sure. test the next one yep. a year later. So you kind of get to play with and experience that beer as it ages. But I, I like what Dangerous Man does where if they have a bottle release, they have all of it on tap for you to try. Oh, yeah. So you can go in, you know, try it. Give it a whirl. And if you go, wow, that's a little hot, I'm going to age my bottle that I yeah. just bought, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Kind of gives you, an, you know, aging beer is kind of a, a guessing game for right. everyone. I don't right. think anyone in particular is amazing at it. <laughs> Lucky. Lucky like an audio. Best. This is still really good. I though. like it. Let's try the, let's pour it next to the 2016. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember 2015. So, and I know I realized it was only three years ago. But uh, that was the, oh, well, I do remember something about 2015 then, Alex. I remember your wedding. I was there. Me huh. participated. <clears throat> and then the rest of the year, I don't remember. So other than that. So my friend Tony, every year for Christmas, buys me a bottle of this. So okay. thank you, Tony Lagagna. Yeah. Is he Italian? <laughs> of course, he's from Pittsburgh. <laughs> let's, let's just look at the colors. My, uh, my I mean, wife. about the same. My wife's one's a bit more hazy. I'd yeah. say this kind of has a bit more. Stephanie uh, is friends, all married uh, Pittsburgh guys, all like her four closest friends, all of them named Anthony, a.k.a. Tony. Nice. So you go there, and you, you have a party. There's literally four Tonys r- running around. Oh, yeah. All uh, Delgamo, Lagania. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where's that? Where's the French boy at? No, the, the see, bear? see my see my wife comes from a the, the same oh, yeah, kind yeah, of place, yeah. you yeah. know. So her last name's Ricci, and her family's all Zappas and Capras and I didn't know Zappa was an Italian name to be honest with you. Yeah. Ah, Frank Zappa, totally Italian man. Who's Frank Zappa? You what? You don't what? <laughs> who? Feel free in the comments <laughs> to tear Troy apart about not knowing who Frank Zappa was. Uh, no, his daughter Moon Unit. No. <laughs> what? What are you? Are talking? you serious? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, let's move on to the beer. You don't know who Frank Zappa is. That's fine. Or Moon Unit. This or, one's a little less caramely. What about Dweezil? What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, and I agree. Less caramely. It has a, a little <clears throat> bit more of a, like a, like a fruit sweetness to it. It's a little brighter. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little more. Uh, it's not it's not quite as smooth as the 2015. Mm-mm. The the 15 has smoothed out quite a bit, and the caramel's really taken over. But like. It, a lot of times that that aged caramel flavor really upsets me, and for some reason these beers are that one doesn't are just handling it yeah. so nicely. And it's a ama- and like a, a tip to the hat to Penn Brewing. That's not easy to do. A lot of times if it's a bourbon aged beer, right? That bourbon flavor is so prevalent and so strong that you don't have to worry about that caramel flavor really shining through. But when you're making a Bach, there's not much to hide in or without hide any aging, uh, you know, any bourbon barrel aging or nope. anything like just that. Just a little just, honey in the bottles, right. and that's it. Yeah. So, oh, that's, pretty amazing. That's quite delightful. Yeah, thank you for bringing those. That's I'm just glad to get them out of my basement. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy I could happy I could help you. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very very good. Yeah, well, glad I could partake in that. The next beer the next beer we have is a treat. Uh if you check our go through our episodes on Taproom Travelers on the YouTube's you will see that we did an episode in a place called Crooked U. I'd say check out that episode because yeah. we actually have a beer from Crooked U. My in-laws are driving through Indiana, America's Crossroads, and yeah. they picked up a beer for us. So, what a treat. Thank you, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne and Kelly. Yeah. Appreciate that. And if I guess, I mean, what can we say about Crooked U? Like it's, I, <laughs> probably one of the most, and I, I know we say that every brewery is good that we go to, and and really it is, I mean, but every, this, this place is oh. amazing. Their food is <clears throat> outstanding. And and drinking beer and eating amazing food, that's, you know. West Bend, Indiana. So if you're at a... At a South Bend. South Bend. What's the name of the team there? The Fighting the, Irish? The Notre Dame? Yeah. The, so, the Notre Dame? So if you go there to the Notre Dames, if you go to the Notre Dames, <laughs> you can swing by and get yourself some beer and food afterwards. Like right. the, I mean, the episode we shot there is essentially food porn at its finest. It, it's a it, it very is. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. kimchi. They oh, the kimchi they is have fantastic. A, the guy in the kitchen, what was his name? Uh, I don't remember his name, and I'm not sure why my dog is going crazy. But um, no, he's a... Um, his, his grandpa was a master chef. He, right. He kind and, of he was, and he was well. trained, and he was trained by his grandpa, and the food is just phenomenal. The, this, the brisket, a 12 or 13 hour brisket... Mm-hmm. Something like that. The pastrami. And I mean, if you can if you can imagine the best brisket that you've ever had, and then just take that and make it so that it just almost melts in your mouth when you eat it, it's it doesn't need like barbecue sauce. It doesn't mm. need anything. It's perfect. It's perfect. I, I've never I don't say this often, but they're general so cauliflower. Cauliflower. It's a, it's a vegan, because the restaurant has a regular menu and then they have a vegan menu. Yeah. So they have a general solo cauliflower, which normally I would not be digging, but holy crap, is that good. And it, and it tastes, I would have never thought that that wasn't chicken. Yeah. That like, cauliflower like tastes if, like chicken. I, I would sit there and eating it and somebody would have went, you know, how's the general so chicken? And I went, oh, it's great. It's cauliflower. You got it. Get right get out, out, of out of here. here. Get, get out, out of here. Out of that here. is not cauliflower. And they're, they're pastrami, which I'm not normally a big pastrami guy, but I would literally lay yeah. in a bed of pastrami. Oh. If you said I made a bed. And the sourdough bread mm. that he's been using, the starter yeast from that his grandpa brought over. Oh, just. Uh, anyway, that, you need to go, go there. Go if, watch the episode. If the episode can't convince you to go you, there, nothing you don't, we say if will. If you don't like Notre Dame and you don't like football, just go when it's not college football season. That's what that that's yeah. when you would go. Yeah. yeah. I 
So oh. what what are we drinking here? I, th- I think we probably did we have this when we were there? Yeah, this is their Glasgow Butcher <clears throat> Scottish yeah. ale. A Scottish ale. Now, this is before we dive into this, because I, I, I do not remember. I know I've had this beer, but it's been a while and I drink a lot. So yeah. Scottish ales can be an interesting style because it can be one of two styles. It's kind of a, a big term that represents both Scotch and and we heavy. So okay. a Scottish ale can be a scotch, which is malty, sweet, nutty. Right. Think Old Chubb from yep. Oscar Blues is kind of an international yep. uh, option. Or it can be a we heavy. Okay. Or, and we heavies come in 60s, 70s, 80s. I saw a 120 today at a store. Yeah. And that's because the Scottish used to tax their beer based on alcohol percentage. That's oh, why okay. they escalate like that. Sure. And we heavies typically are made with heavier water that Scotland is known for. That's why they make scotch. That heavy water and the entire island is just uh, island. Man, it is an island. Yeah. It's covered with a decaying moss, peat moss. So a lot of the water has a smoky characteristic. So we heavies tend to be boozy and smoky. Okay. And so I, Scottish ale can represent either. When you say Scottish ale, it can be one of the two. So if you love sweet malty, you might like a scotch. Whereas if you're like, oh, or uh, if you prefer uh, smoky or whatever, you yeah. go with we heavies. Okay. So I don't know like, what this is. Know. I can't remember. This is a Scottish, I think, is what it's well, I mean, but yeah, yeah. Oh, that's definitely a Scotch ale. Oh, that's good though. Mm. Mm-hmm. And it's gluten free. Well, gluten reduced. Gluten reduced. That's what it was. He has yeah. uh, they. The, their... Those clarifier breaks the gluten strand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if people, you have, mild... if you if you have celiac, I, I probably wouldn't drink it. But if, if you, you have were... mild. Uh, allergies yeah i i would say go ahead and give it a try all of his beers are like that too so. right all of them yeah yep mm, that is good fantastic nice. it's just how i remember what it. a scotch ale should taste like it's light it's malty you got a little nutty flavor yeah. in there sweet speaking of wee heavy one of these weeks uh on the vlog when you said I, when, when you said speaking of wee heavies i thought you were just gonna point at me and laugh I'm no, I'm not that uh, mean. A little heavy. I'm, I'm really yeah. not that mean. Uh, I have a wee heavy from Dangerous Man oh. aged on Lafroig barrels. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It was good. You said like four things that I love in that <laughs> sentence. Dangerous and Man, and I, I wee heavies. I think it's a couple years Lefroig. old. I think it's a couple years old because it was it was pretty hot when, when I had the oh, first yeah. one. But I'm looking forward to opening that bottle. Oh. But I, I feel like we should have Jake here. Yeah, so, I feel like Jake would appreciate the heck yeah. out of that. So anyway, um, yeah, those are some fantastic beers. I think we're going to try, we'll probably try to do some Christmas beers one of these weeks. Oh, yeah, because, we're kind of doing a little Christmas. Yeah, action, yeah, they're, it's the St. Nick. Yeah. Um, we'll do some uh, some different kind of Christmas beers, you know, some spiced oh, ales yeah. and some winter ales and that kind of thing. I, we, did, we did one last week. Uh, it was the, I can't remember, it was Molnir or Molnir. Anyway, the name of Thor's hammer. Oh, did you know Thor's na- hammer had a name? Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Anyway, yeah. there's a beer named yeah. Mjolnir. Uh, so we did that last week, and it's it's kind of a spiced ale. From who? Uh, Crow Peak in South oh, Dakota. Oh yeah, the Crow Peak. Yeah. Peaks, yeah. Yeah. Watch the episode. yeah, you should watch the episode, Troy. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, uh, so those are our beers for this week. Uh, like I said, we talked about Hot Passport. Go on that website, and and we'll have all the details and the links below. And uh, leave us a comment. Share us with a friend. Find us on Instagram, tell Facebook, us what we and do Twitter. Wrong. Yeah. Tell us what we do wrong or tell us what we're doing I, right. What little what little we'll do, <laughs> we're doing right. You can tell us about it. It's okay. Uh, so anyway, until next week, that's all from us for this week. We'll see ya. Prost. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.